continuous. It's the one word, one of the many words I can't spell. Continuous. So I can't spell it, so I just write CTS for continuous. Uh, continuous function theorem. So if there is a uh, function is a continuous function f which goes from the positive real numbers into r such that f of x equals a of x for all x in the positive integers then lim n approaches infinity a of n equals lim x approaches infinity f of x. So this theorem basically says if you have a function that's equal to your um, original sequence function, you can just take the limit of that function. Now, you're going to implicitly use this theorem anytime that you need to go and use L'Hopital's rule. So this theorem, you don't really need to pay attention to it because you're just going to use it and not really think about it. So it, you don't need to really spend any time or brain cells trying to remember this. You're just going to use it and you don't need to worry about it. So you don't need to worry about this theorem. So let's do two last examples. Determine convergence or divergence. How do we determine convergence or divergence if we know what the nth term looks like? The new guy. All right. So take the <laughs> take the limit when n goes to infinity. I'm going to write that square root as a half power, like that. So first of all, when I plug in infinity, what do I get is four infinities over infinity. So if I just naively go ahead, oh, I'll just plug in infinity, no problem. We're going to get four infinities plus one, I don't care about the plus one, over infinity to the one half power which is really infinity over infinity. So we're going to use L'Hopital's rule. There's one small problem. We just have that little one half power to deal with. So what I'm going to do is use the fact that the square root function is continuous. So let's let f of x equal square root x. So then f of 4n plus 1 over n is going to be square root 4n plus 1 over n. Uh, f is continuous. Uh, it's continuous for all x 0 or more. So I really care about uh, big x values. So we're going to be sending limit as, uh, or n, limit as n approaches infinity. So I don't care that it's not continuous, that it doesn't have a domain for negative values. We're just going to look at large positive values. So 
f sigma continuous and limit n approaches infinity square root 4n plus 1 over n is going to equal lim n approaches infinity f of 4n plus 1 over n. The reason that I said f need to be continuous is that I'm going to push the limit through the continuous function, which is a very useful thing to do for continuous functions. So we're going to have f of limit and approaches infinity for n plus 1 over n. So this uses the fact that f is continuous exactly when you can lim x approaches a f of x equals f of lim x approaches a of x. So that's the property we're using for continuous functions. So have I said this before this quarter? I think I did it when we were doing natural logs and exponents. We did this a little bit. Um, so why does this work? What is the limit of x approaches a of x? Easiest limit. Just a. That's it. f of a. And we know the limit equals f of a. That's what it actually means to be continuous. So limit f of x, x approaches a equals f of a. That's what it means to be continuous. And I'm just rewriting uh, a as limit x approaches a of x. So this is what I call passing the limit through a continuous function. I did this right here when I took the uh, limit of f of 4n plus 1 over n, and I said that was equal to limit of f, or equal to f of the limit. So I took the limit and basically passed it through the function f right there. So let's just look at the uh, inside limit right now. So we're going to ignore whatever we get for this limit. At the very end, we're just going to f it. And that will be our actual limit. So we're going to look just at the inside limit now. We get four infinities over infinity, which we know is infinity over infinity. So now I can use L'Hopital's rule, and I don't have to worry about anything weird going on. So this is a super, whoa, 4n plus 1 over n. Make sure we write that down. There should be an n in the bottom. All right, this is probably the easiest L'Hopital's rule problem I can give you. So apply L'Hopital's rule. Tell me what you get. Take 10 seconds or less. Remember, you're taking an n derivative, not an x derivative. If you take an x derivative, you get 0 over 0. So derivative 4, n plus 1 is 4. Derivative n is 1. So this is equal to the limit. As n approaches anything, I don't care but 4 over 1 is going to be 4. So there's my limit. So we just figured out that inside limit was 4. So this is equal to f of 4, which is square root 4, and that's 2. So our final answer is 2. Questions on this limit here. 
So there's a lot more intermediate steps than I really needed to write. If I was not being very careful, I could have pretty much applied L'Hopital's rule inside this, but I'd probably take a point or two off because you're technically doing uh, infinity over infinity square root. Uh, I guess the other option is I could have distributed the square root to the numerator and denominator and then did L'Hopital's rule, although I'd have a chain, a chain rule going on at that point. So my derivative would not be so easy. And where does the continuous function theorem come into play? So I didn't really say anything about the continuous function theorem. Where it really comes into play is when I actually go and take derivatives down here, because technically this function right here is only defined for integers, not for all n values. So the idea of the continuous function theorem is that I could just replace n by x, and it will be equal uh, So basically a n is a square root 4 n plus 1 over n and f of x, oop, I already used f of x, better not reuse that. So we'll go g of x square root 4 x plus 1 over x and you can just take the limit of g of x because g of x is defined for all x in the interval, nope, not zero, one to infinity. And technically the domain of a n was basically all n in the set one, two, three, dot, 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 like that. So only for integer values. So this doesn't really matter whether or not you're using n or x for uh, functions. The one time you run into trouble is the factorial function. Until you go to differential equations, the factorial function is not defined for all. Uh, for now, the factorial function is only for integers. So we can't really talk about the derivative of the factorial function without doing a lot more work. So that factorial function doesn't, as far as we're concerned, have derivatives yet. It will at some point, and I think it's the gamma function, which gets into some interesting ideas. But for now, uh, you cannot use L'Hopital's rule on factorials because we don't know their derivatives. So that's the only time you really can't use L'Hopital's rule. And when we get to factorials with limits, we'll deal with them using algebra, which is how we generally deal with things we can't uh, handle with calculus. We just break out algebra tools. All right, last one. Convergence or divergence. And we have Bn equals ln of n over n. And if you don't want to have ln n hang around, you can just use ln x. That works just as well. So let's go ahead and let f of x equal ln x over x, lim bn n approaches infinity is equal to lim x approaches infinity f of x. So this one is very straightforward L'Hopital's rule. So you can figure out this one. So use L'Hopital's rule. I'll give you one minute. So use L'Hopital's rule on this. So you get ln infinity over infinity uh, equals infinity over infinity. So L'Hopital's rule is applicable. So go ahead and apply it.
So you should have gotten zero for your limit here. And, ah, convergent or divergent? What does zero mean? So you get a number and you're convergent. So we converge to zero. I uh, didn't, I don't think I wrote converge or diverge for the previous problem. We got two, also a number, convergent. So convergent to two for the previous. So make sure you answer the question that is asked. So convergent to two, convergent to zero. So let's write out some common limits now. We're going to use this as one of them. So we've got lim n approaches infinity, ln of n over n equals zero. Lim n approaches infinity. All these limits are going to be n approaching infinity. Now we're going to mix x's in. <coughs> we're taking a limit when n is going to infinity. So when you write n goes to infinity, you're uh, assuming that x is not changing. So this number x is not going to be changing right here. So we got x down here. It's going to be the same number the whole time, just your n is going to keep increasing. So this one is going to equal 1 when x is greater than 0. Our, and that may seem a little weird because you get a huge number like a million raised to the 1 over n power. Uh, it will certainly be smaller than a million, like square root of a million is way smaller than a million, cube root of a million is even smaller. And if you keep raising the uh, you know, 1 over n, and you go like the 10th root of a million, it starts to get to a relatively small number. Once you get to like the millionth root of a million, you see that it's pretty close to 1. And that's true, uh, even if x was bigger than a million. So that's why you get 1 here. And, and if x was a really tiny number, like 0.1, if you look at 0.1 to the 1 1 millionth power, you'll be pretty close to 1 also. Uh, next one we're going to do, this is one we've seen before, lim x, uh, n approaches infinity, 1 plus x over n to the nth power. Does anybody remember this one? Yeah. yeah. E to the, almost, e to the x. E to the x, and I think we need to be no, I think that'll work for actually for all x values. Yeah, even negative ones. So the nth root of n so that's n to the one nth power And this also equals 1. Uh, you can prove this if you took the, basically use that natural log trick, and take natural log inverse of natural log, and do the things that we did at the end of the L'Hopital section. You could actually prove this one. And next up, lim, and approaches infinity, x to the n. So this will equal zero for certain x values. What type of x values? I think we did this one already. So this works for small x values when x is less than, absolute value is less than one. Keep raising a small fraction to a higher power and it gets smaller. And smaller to zero. 
think we did these with R's. We wrote all these down with R's already. So it's going to be infinity when x is bigger than 1. And limit n approaches to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. equals zero for any x. So this one we can't really prove with the uh, calculus tools that we have. So this one we're not able to prove with calculus tools. At least not the ones that we have right now. Uh, I would get infinity over infinity for a big x, x bigger than one, uh, but the bottom part is what will give us trouble with L'Hopital's rule. Uh, if x is small, this is really obvious because this is smaller than x to the n because we're dividing by a big factorial power, or not big, a big factorial uh, value. All right, so these are some common limits. You may not need to write them all down in your notes or in your cheat sheet, but definitely some of them can be useful. So we'll do one example using some of these. Convergence or divergence of Cn is to 2n root of 3n. So we're in the 2n root of 3n, which I could write as 3n to the 1 over 2n power. So this is similar to one of these problems that we just, or one of these common limits that I just wrote down. It is similar to the nth root of n, except unfortunately it's not quite the same thing. So we can do a little algebra to make it look like that. So what we know is lim n approaches infinity n to the 1 over n equals 1. So that's what we know. So what are some ideas, some algebra ideas to use here? So I can get 2n so that's pretty easy to do. 3n <laughs> is 2n plus another n. Is that a legal algebra move? No, you cannot distribute a power across addition. So that's not a good move to make. So that's not gonna, I couldn't just take these two limits separately. So that's not gonna work. Um, that is very wrong. So I could break it down like this, but because it's plus, it's not useful with the power. So let's, this isn't wrong, but it's not going to be very helpful. So how can we do something slightly different? So what I just tried is breaking 3n apart using addition. Let's break 3n apart using multiplication. Multiplication and powers work really well. What do I need right here? so that these are actually equal. Three over, two. three over two, right? Three over two times two is three. So if I use multiplication, it is two n times three halves, and that gives me three n. Mm -hmm. 
is it okay to split up the exponent like this? Yeah, so exponents and multiplication, very good friends, no problem. You can split them up. All right, so once you know this, let's put this into the limit. Lim uh, n approaches infinity. 2n square root 3n is equal to lim n approaches infinity 3 halves 1 over 2n times 2n 1 over 2n. So now I have limit of a product which is not directly one of these common limits right here. However, if I scroll up a little further, and this is also all these properties we did in calculus one class. Here we go. These algebraic properties, the product limit is the uh, product of the two limits right there. So I'm going to use that property. We have limit three halves to the one half power, and, nope, one over two n power, times limit n approaches infinity, two n, one over two n power. This is only gonna be equal if both of these limits exist separately. If one of them's infinity or does not exist, they won't be equal. So, I'm not 100% sure yet, it, as long as they ex both exist and our numbers will be fine. So go ahead and see if you can figure out each limit right here. They should be right, pretty much right on this uh, common limit list right here. So what is our first limit? The 3 halves to the 1 over 2n power. That would be equation 2. Yep, we're positive, uh, greater than 0, and we have, now we do have 1 over 2n, but that's going to behave just like the 1 over n power right there. So we got 1 is our first limit <coughs> times, which is the second limit? Is that number 4? Four, yeah, so it's n to the 1 over n, except we have 2n, 2n now. And that is 1. 1 times 1 is 1, and because they were both numbers, we're allowed to split it up as a product. There are other ways to do this. I'm pretty sure you could have gone uh, ln inverse ln and did a L'Hopital's rule way to get it also. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Go back to the end of L'Hopital's rule, we did some problems like that. <coughs> 